but the story is, is, is complicated um, um, uh, and has contradictions to it that make this, that play out in this election because there, we have kind of like different stories, different narratives going out at different paces. Some of them are resolved, some of them aren't resolved, but all of them are at the middle, at the core, have these revolutionary changes that are changing the country dramatically. Um, we talked about race, uh, which is the most important you know, piece of it, but it, that's, that's just one of many pieces that revolutionary changes, disruptive changes, all simultaneously has to do with increasing foreign population, increasing immigrant population, Hispanic population, increasing number of people that are unmarried, over half the country are unmarried, and that's, and that's increasing, increasingly a secular country, we now have a quarter of the electorate that will be uh, secular, not have no religion in this election. The millennials are uh, growing uh, apace, exceeding the baby boomers. Uh, the population has shifted the metropolitan area. Huge growth uh, in the city, cities in the last five years, particularly in the dense, you know, core cities. So you've, you've got these massive changes, you know, going on and, and accelerating. The political stuff is just like the, you know, just the, the you know, the sideshow for the core changes you know, in the country. And that's why I wrote um, the book, you know, called the book, uh, America Send It, because it does produce a dynamism, both economic and cultural dynamism, that few countries can match. I mean, I work around the globe, as I was pointed out by EJ, and it's hard to work abroad and not you know, cheer for America, because people abroad are cheering for America, because they see you know, what we bring into the equation that make us unique and exceptional, and why I think, you know, over time we will emerge, you know, ascendant. But the other piece of this are the contradictions. I mean, as powerful are these forces, these revolutionary changes that are producing progress, that are producing uh, income stagnation and decline, they're producing increased inequality, they're increasing increased poverty in the cities, and increased uh, inequality particularly in the, in the dynamic, uh, you know, cities. Um, they're producing actually in racial conflict. There's a whole range of problems <clears throat> that are growing in scale, and the country is desperate for change. It's, it's actually the kind of the core argument that you know I think sets up a for what's happened with Donald Trump, but also you know what you know, happened with Bernie Sanders. The country is watching both the changes and the contradictions and the downside of our progress, and they want bold leaders. They want they want action. They want people to bring change, big change. And it begins with going after the corrupt politics that keeps uh, the game rigged. Um, and that leads to an openness to reform. And I make the case that it is very much like the progressive era uh, in which we had an industrial revolution, um, uh, very similar uh, gains in productivity that came, uh, that came out of the industrial revolution to the IT revolution um, that we have now. Uh, but also uh, similar inequality and uh, problems of ur you know, urbanization that produced a reform movement in reaction to it. And that's happening now. You know, it's happening at the local level. It's happening in states. Um, it, it's happening in our politics. And I think that's the, I think that's the context that I you know, try to bring to interpreting this election. And each of the parties, each of the leaders, are each kind of uh, trying to come to terms with that dynamism.